The views and opinions expressed in this program are not necessarily the views of ECTV News, the City of East Chicago, nor this broadcast station or website. ECTV airs public meetings as a service to the community it serves. Speakers at public meetings, broadcast, or posted by ECTV News are solely responsible for their comments. ECTV News reserves the right to edit or remove any profanity or abusive language or behavior deemed inappropriate for our viewing audience. If you have any comments or suggestions about this program, contact ECTV News at 219-391-8206. Call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, June 23rd, 2014. Will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Present. Battle? Present. Vasquez? Present. Cuevas? Present. Orange? <coughs> Maldonado? Arnold? Parks? Francisco? Present. Madam Clerk, for the record, I did get a call from Councilwoman Arnold. She's got some family business, and uh, Councilwoman Maldonado was under the weather. Mm -hmm. First thing on the agenda is to call to order the public hearing. Madam Clerk. Ordinance, I mean public hearing 140011, sponsored by Anthony Copeland, additional appropriation ordinance. Do we have someone from the mayor's office? Hi, Sandra Favela, Interim Director for Department of Human Resources. I'm presenting this, um, this I believe, in third reading for the additional appropriations for the summer employment for the amount of $40,000. Any questions from the council? Councilman Santos. Sandra, is this the $40,000 you asked that was going to be able to hire everybody? Is this the $40,000 we're talking about? Correct. And we hired everybody that applied? Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. I now open the podium to see who is for or against Ordinance 14-0011. I'm now closing the public hearing portion of the meeting. We're now going to start our regular scheduled meeting. Motion to accept the minutes for regular scheduled meeting on June 9th, 2014. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilman Santos. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call please. Santos. Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Do we have any communications from the mayor? No. Oh, excuse me, I believe we do have Attorney Morgan. Good afternoon, I'm Carla Morgan, City Attorney. I'm here to kind of speak on and take questions uh, on behalf of the mayor's office regarding um, events and events and conditions in the 4500 block of Magoon. Uh, there have been, um, starting uh, more than a year ago, and reports of um, higher levels of crime in that block, also a number of coal violations. There was a meeting approximately 10 days ago here in the council chambers um, of the, that was, I think, the council public safety committee, if I'm not standing mistaken. Committee. It was, okay, it was standing committee of the council to ask the status on um, 
the city's efforts to correct the code violations and address the crime in that block, as well as the status of the city employing the nuisance ordinance that you all passed last summer and whether tweaks to the ordinance are uh, needed. At this time, um, it's the opinion of the law office that tweaks aren't needed. What we do have to do is um, gather information so that we can aggressively go after the building owner. So toward that end, we uh, compose letters and are just waiting for just a little bit of information to fill in the blanks. And I can share uh, the draft of this letter. I'm sorry I didn't bring copies, but I will share it with Councilman Santos from that area and provide copies to the rest of the council on the letter that will be going out to um, the two addresses in particular, the owners of the two addresses in particular that are a problem. Um, that are the biggest problems, they're not the only problems. So I'll give uh, Councilman Santos a copy of this letter, but also uh, to let you know that that letter is a first step in the city seeking an injunction. And so for that reason, we had to find out the current status of all the code violations. I have the status of the existing code violations. I believe two are still pending in court. Um, some, just a very few of them have actually been addressed where they corrected the code violations. And um, our code enforcement department is going out and writing up code violations that continue to exist there. So new tickets are being issued. So as soon as I have all that information, as well as um, I was getting an update of the police calls that have happened since you last got an update, which I think was dated last summer. Uh, so all that can be included. Again, it's important for us to be thorough since that's step one in us getting injunctions against building owners that just simply refuse to comply. And I think your experience there has been that they've been absentee landlords at best and you know you could really say more about them than that with the number of uh, you know as, as you pointed out there were um, last year one of the addresses had 75 911 calls to just a single address so again um, we've met um, that day after your meeting, we had a follow-up meeting, uh, I believe it was that Friday afternoon, to get all our ducks in a row. And so we're ready to pull the trigger. We just got to fill in some of the blanks on this letter. Um, I believe, and you tell me, but uh, uh, the patrols have been stepped up in the area. Is that true? Um, and that we're aggressively going after all the violations there because, again, no one should have to live in those conditions and now that we're aware of it, we are aggressively going after it. You have uh, my sympathy. I had trouble on my block for some years that have been corrected, so I do understand. Councilman Santos. Uh, thank you, Carla, for coming. You know, I, we did have that meeting and uh, I'm glad that uh, we're moving forward and these are some of the, the fruits that are starting to come available now that uh, after that meeting. But uh, if I can ask a favor that if you keep our attorney in the circle because I know this is probably going to be the first one we've done since that ordinance has passed last year and I want to make sure that he's involved because ultimately when we have all these legal questions and we always go to Steve and, mm -hmm. and he's the one I've been beating for a while I've been calling him after every every time I have to call the police I call Steve right away and he gets to hear you know 15 minutes of me yelling at him that hey you know why isn't this ordinance or what, what can we do with this ordinance. So, so keep him in the loop so that he knows where we're at legally. And, and final question, how long do you think this process may take place? I know well, we started it, the process, and we filed it already in court. No, we have, the, the letter is step one, and then they have 30 days to respond, and then we file it in court. So, again, the letter has been ready to go since, um, you know, the meeting re reprioritized my work so I got the letter ready to go within 24 hours after our meeting I just have to fill in the blanks can I approach and give you the letter and so I have on my computer one address to each of those property owners and I'm just waiting to fill in the blanks that you see there um, so as soon as I have that information, it'll go out regular mail and certified mail to the, those two owners. And so the date of that letter starts at 30 days ticking. And so we'll file for the injunction as soon as we hit the 30-day mark. 
So that puts them on notice if they're going to be, if they're going to act in good faith, they'll get on it right then and address their tenants that are doing all these things to make everybody else in the block miserable. And if they don't, then we're moving against them. Again, as we discussed at the meeting, um, for forfeiture of the property, we have to work with the Lake County Prosecutor's Office. And as I said, I plan to meet with them within the month to ask them that if these owners aren't responding that we we're going to ask them to work a partnership to forfeit the property so what the city can do is get an injunction to shut them down and board the building but ultimately if you're not a responsible landlord and you make everybody else's life miserable then you shouldn't be a landlord in that block and so that's ultimately what if they continue on like they have been what the city wants is for them to no longer have ownership of those properties and Carl, I know Councilwoman Orange did mention <coughs> too that if we could forward a lot of that information to the housing, because I believe yes. there is a lot of people over there that are eating subsidized house, housing right. there. And Our housing director was at that meeting we had on Friday, and she uh, identified that she did have a Section 8 tenant in the one building in question, and so she's looking at that tenant's history, the police calls that were involved with that person, and um, she's aggressively going after that, too. You know, when um, they sign a lease, there are certain standards they have to live by, and so she's following up on that as well. Um, our health department was there. Uh, police and fire were all there at that meeting, and they understand it was impressed upon them that this is a high priority. It's not this regular priority. It's a high priority. Can I keep that copy of that letter? Absolutely. And uh, before you go today, I can print up a copy for everybody. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Councilwoman Orange. Uh, Ms. Morgan, and even though we know that that has been uh, the, in the 4500 block of Magoon, and just so happens that Councilman Santos have been keeping a log of the things that are going on, we don't want anyone to go away thinking that if their problem is is, is something that's happening on their block, none of the constituents in our districts, that that would not be addressed. We don't want anybody to think that one thing is a high priority over another. It's just that he has been keeping such a good log over the last year of the calls and the, the problems, uh, you know, uh, on that block. And so uh, if anybody would have a problem, and, and we will be addressing this, this just happens to be the poster child for what that ordinance was uh, built on. And um, this could be our first way of addressing absentee landlords and people that think that they're going to be able to come here and dump, get the money from their tenants and never return to do what they're supposed to do. And then they get another set of tenants and they put them in and, and, and it's a vicious cycle of not caring who's in those buildings because really if you are renting, you should be doing some type of background checks to even see if these people are worthy of being into your property, but if you live miles from here, you don't care. So I, I don't want anybody to think that one uh, priority is over the other because we're going to make sure that all of the constituents are safe. Well, one thing that was communicated to everyone present at that Friday meeting is we had to come up with a system where through dispatch we would identify properties once they hit a certain number of police calls a year that they would then make the list of, you know, we're watching you and we're going to go after you with this letter and then an injunction. And I think that's what we had wanted in the ordinance, and that's what we had asked for a monthly uh, report to be sent to code enforcement and for code enforcement to send theirs to the police department, the police department send theirs, and that way they could have a thing. And I know this is all new because before they weren't checking on anything doing code enforcement and maybe they weren't following up things at the police department I think that this is all new for them and now you can cross uh, reference of what's really going on but I think that was the intent of our uh, ordinance last year is to make sure that at least we start a dialogue and with each other on what's really going on because when it gets so far you know and you bring the landlords out by that time the tenant is gone, but then they get the same type of tenants in because it's quick, fast money, and that's exactly what they're they're doing. And these people are subleasing to other people, and, and it's just a mess. But I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. Well, like I said, our very clear instruction from the mayor and the mayor's office was to create a system whereby a red flag goes off once you get a certain number of calls within a certain time frame, and then 
wherever you are in the city, that that address becomes a priority now that we enforce the nuisance ordinance against them. Because again, it makes everybody miserable. It's a danger, and we don't want anybody to have to live like that, obviously. We got about four good months left, and <laughs> we, we don't want to have to be bothered with that all summer long. Right. Yep. Okay. And again, um, you know, do you put it on high on the priority list, so we're working on it. We're taking feedback from, you know, any other place in town that has a particular problem. We certainly will add that to the list without it even going through dispatch. So we're doing our best to be res responsive to you on this. So Thank you. Okay, thank you. Just make sure you keep our attorney in the loop. Will do. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Attorney Morgan. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> any communications from department heads? Yes, accounts payable zero six two three one four CC. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Santos, seconded by Councilwoman Vasquez, to accept accounts payable zero six two three one four CC. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Franciscan? Yes. Accounts payables 062414CC. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Cuevas, seconded by Councilman Battle, to accept accounts payable 06. 241CC. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Franciscan? Yes. Payroll warrant 060614. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Cuevas, seconded by Councilwoman Orange, to accept payroll warrants 060614. Any questions on the motion? Excuse me. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Mm -hmm. Yes. Franciscan? Yes. Payroll warrant 060614. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilwoman Vasquez, to accept payroll warrants 060614. Have any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Franciscan? Yes. Payroll warrant 062014. So moved. Second. A motion was made by Councilman Cuevas, seconded by Councilwoman Orange, to accept payroll warrants 062014. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Francisco? Yes. This time, do we have any committee reports? Board reports? I believe we do have Mr. Rodriguez from the Waterway Commission. Good evening, Henry Rodriguez, uh, council appointee of the East Chicago Waterway Management District. I did have information last uh, month, but I wasn't able to attend the meeting because of other commitments. Um, what I was supposed to talk about last time was the accident that they had with the barge on the canal, knocking down those NIPSCO wires. Uh, there was a, uh, for what I understand, what I got the information is that there was a meeting between the contractors. Well, what had happened is the boom had been up too high, and they said somebody on the barge wasn't paying attention, so the boom was up, and it hit the wires. 
So they had made a couple of external policy changes and about a half a dozen internal policy changes. Um, so what's going to happen is that the contractor is uh, in conversation with NIPSCO to possibly putting some signs up on the wires. Uh, IDEM, INDOT has already approved saying, yeah, it's okay to go ahead and do it, but NIPSCO is still waiting on NIPSCO since it is their power line. So they're going to put some signs up on the, uh, I don't know how big, but uh, up on those wires. Now what's, what happened now is that um, the, those are the external. They're talking with NIPSCO and they're going to you know, put the signs up there. Uh, hopefully NIPSCO approves. Uh, internal policy changes within the contractor's company says cards will be created with the clearance expected on the site and will be supplied to the, uh, to the crew. Also, the captain will confirm the heights of various equipments on the barge with knowledge of the overhead clearance to be cleared, to be encountered. Captain and the barge foreman will communicate these heights before the barges are moved. Cranes will be transported by barges will have the booms lowered to around five degrees. And, you know, I guess that's enough to clear it. Signs regarding over to construct con obstructions will be added to the barge con connex, tugboat wheel, and the uh, spud engine controls, retraining of all crew uh, with responsibility for marine transportation e uh, equipment. So uh, this is what they're, they're implemented within the company and externally with uh, NIPSCO. I guess that, that's still an ongoing uh, process there. All right, now as far as the dredging, uh, dredging had stopped uh, for a couple of weeks back in June or earlier this month because of equipment failure. They started dredging uh, June 13th. And so far, they've already dredged uh, 90,000 cubic yards out of 200,000 that they expect to do this dredging period. So they, they figured it would finish up in about one more month. Um, I know we're still waiting. We had mentioned that the parkway along the CDF uh, covered with weeds, we had made an agreement last year to get that, to get the Army Corps of Engineers to plow that under and then put rock there. Uh, I'm still waiting on on them to bring the rock, although I, I was told that herbicide had been sprayed Roundup to kill the weeds going down the length of, of the CDF. And then when they get the rocks, what they said probably in September, uh, probably put the rocks down there to, you know, keep the weeds from coming up. And they're going to maintain uh, that property there. So that's what I have. Any questions for Mr. Rodriguez? Thank you. All right. Madam Clerk, any ordinances on first reading? Yes, 140011, sponsor May Anthony Copeland, additional appropriation ordinance. President, so move on first and second reading. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Santos, seconded by Councilwoman Vasquez, to hear ordinance 14 0011 on second reading. Have any discussion on the motion? Councilwoman Orange. Sandra, they've all started working, right? They're not waiting on this amount before the rest of them start working. Yes, that's right. They're all working now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Madam Cl uh, Clerk, roll call to adopt Ordinance 14-0011 on second reading. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Do we have any ordinance on second reading? Yes, 14-0009, sponsored Councilman Lennon Francisci, transfer of appropriations. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Cuevas, seconded by Councilman Santos, to hear ordinance 14-0009 on second reading. Any discussion on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call to adopt Ordinance 14-0009 on second reading. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Mm -hmm. Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinances on third reading? It's 14-0007. 
Sponsor May Anthony Copeland, additional appropriation ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Cuevas, seconded by Councilwoman Vasquez, to hear Ordinance 14-0007 on third reading. Any discussion on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call to adopt Ordinance 14-0007 on third and final reading. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Francisco. Yes. Ordinance 14-0008, sponsor me, Anthony Copeland, additional ordinance. So Come on, Mr. President. Second. <coughs> Motion was made by Councilman Santos, seconded by Councilman Cuevas, to hear Ordinance 14-0008 on third and final reading. Any discussion on the motion? Councilwoman Orange. Miss Fran. The, the funding dates that they have here from October uh, 2013 to September 2014. Does that just mean that that's when the money was available for this, yes. this grant? Can I have your name and title for the record, oh, I'm please? I'm sorry. Francis. <laughs> Francis Nowacki, Recreation Manager for the City of East Chicago. Thank you. Is that when uh, you guys applied for the grant? Yes. So this grant has to be used up by September 30th of 2014? With the redevelopment? Yeah. Um, yes. Yes, that's the first part, yes. So they'll be working up until then, and then is there an additional grant for this to continue? Yes, it, the fall? yes, yes, there is, and we applied for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, roll call to adopt or ordinance 14 0008 on third and final reading. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Franciski? Yes. Okay. Madam Clerk, do we have any resolutions? No. Is there any old business? I have uh, one thing. Councilwoman Orange? Um, I don't know, Vivian, if, if I had talked to you about Dollar General. I don't know if you sent a letter. I know you sent the first letter out for oh, the... Wow. Okay, well, if you would send a letter thanking them for taking down the cigarette signs, they did comply to the letter. And I would like to thank them for taking down the cigarette signs and um, for being good uh, corporate neighbors. Um, so I just want to let people know that they, you know, we asked them, they did, and they said they would not put them up again, so. Any other old business? Moving on to new business. Councilman Santos. Mr. President, at this time I'd like to add Ordinance 14-0012 to the agenda. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Santos, seconded by Councilwoman Orange, to add Ordinance 14-0012. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Councilman Santos. Mr. President, um, in regards to this 14-0012, it's an ordinance uh, with our health department. It's a grant that we have, and there's $14,000, and uh, hopefully if this council passes it to add it on the agenda, uh, we have the director of the health department that's going to speak in regards to this, just so, you know. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Yes. Bato? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Mr. President? Councilman Santos? I move to adopt Ordinance 14-0012 on uh, first and second reading. Second. second. You got it. <clears throat> Motion was made by Councilman Santos, seconded by Councilwoman Vasquez, to hear Ordinance 14-0012 on second reading. 
Any discussion on the motion? Councilman Santos? Mr. President, I believe we do have the director from the health department here. Just go over it briefly. Good evening, council members. My name is Terry Martin. I'm the director of the health department. And I'm here this evening asking for your support in passing ordinance number 14-0012. Um, I'd like to give a brief overview for you at this time. This is a preparedness grant, emergency preparedness grant. It's two grants, actually, but they're the same for the same purpose. We were funded these dollars through ISDH, Indiana State Department of Health, um, last year. The grant period began June, July 1 of 2013 through June 2014. And the state did not pass the funds down for us to use until December of 2013. At that time, we had budgeted for a coordinator's position. And so we did not hire a coordinator until March of this year. So therefore, there's uh, a balance of dollars in that line item as well as some other line items that will have gone, with, gone along with that early hire that unless we do a budget modification, um, we would not be able to use those funds before June 30th. So we're asking that the original amount of the grant in total, the two grants together, was $34,946. And we're asking a transfer of funds um, from the salary line items and contract line items so that we might, may buy additional equipment items before the end of the grant cycle, June 30. Any questions? Councilwoman Orange? No, I, I just have a comment. Um, and I see that you guys were working diligently at the uh, health, uh, the, your opening of the uh, clinic portion of it. And you guys are doing a good job so far over there. Thank I'm you. hoping that we can get together and talk about the um, the dog laws because that that has something to do with your department absolutely but um i, I think that if you didn't get a chance to go and and revisit the health department they haven't moved or anything but to get a chance to go in and talk and it, it, it's very nice thank you any other questions comments thank you madam clerk will call to adopt ordinance 14-0012 on second reading. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Franciski? Yes. Mr. President? Councilman Santos? So move to suspend the rules. And here, ordinance 14 0012 on its last and final reading. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Santos, seconded by Councilwoman Vasquez to hear Ordinance 14-0012 on third reading. I'm sorry, to suspend the rules and hear it on third reading. Do we have any discussion on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Franciski? Yes. Mr. President? Councilman Santos. So move to pass ordinance 14-0012 on its last and final reading. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Santos, seconded by Councilman Cuevas to hear ordinance 14-0012 on third and final reading. Any questions on the motion? Madam Clerk, roll call please. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Franciski? Yes. Councilwoman Orange? You know, um, Mr. President, and, and sometimes <laughs> as council members, we do um, talk about negative things that have happened in the city or whatever. So. When you talk about negative, you also have to give praise when it's been corrected. Last year, me and um, Councilman Santos, I think we had a um, we had like a tag team last year on the parks because the parks was in uh, bad condition. But I, I can tell you that I went by each park and it has improved greatly. 
the parks really look nice. And um, like I said, last year we did, we uh, ripped uh, the director pretty good. So I'm saying that it has improved. They have made uh, considerable imp improvements. And just as we talked about how bad it was, we now need to give it some praise that it is changed and has done real good. I don't think you've had any problems, have you, Councilman? No, <laughs> and I agree. Councilwoman Vasquez. Yes, I just wanted to mention, um, sometimes we, we don't know exactly what our neighboring uh, companies do in the city. Uh, Sitco Refinery has an annual picnic that it reaches out in the neighborhood. But they also do a lot of other things for the schools, and sometimes this information isn't publicly known. But I met with Sitco last week, and we have a small park area on the 47, 4800, 4900 block of Parish. And when I met with them last week at the park, they were going to come out because they just happened to be um, driving in the area and saw that the park was a little bit unkept. So they're replacing all the benches. Um, um, they're putting some um, mulch down. Um, they're also painting all the flower pots on all three of those blocks and putting all new flowers in. So they did, uh, and it came from, they didn't hire anybody to do it. It's the workers themselves, the plant manager and all the guys that work out there that are coming out and doing the work themselves. So I just wanted to give um, thanks to Sitco Refinery for giving back to the community as much as they do. The new business, I just want to let my colleagues now uh, know there will be a council workshop uh, scheduled for Thursday at noon. That is June 26th, this Thursday. And I believe under new uh, business, uh, we have the acceptance of uh, conflict dis a disclosure statement of an elected official. I believe Councilman Cuevas can uh, speak on that. Yeah, I just submitted a conflict of interest, a uniform conflict of interest business disclosure statement to the city of East Chicago. Just want to make that publicly known and expressed. Anything else for new business? Just want to let the hundreds of people in the audience know and uh, the millions of people watching <laughs> TV, please have a, a good 4th of July and be safe with their fireworks, please. Can I have a... Moving on to public expression, if you could please keep your comments to three minutes. I believe we do have one. Mr. Juan M. Andrade. Good evening, Juan Andrade. I haven't been here in who knows how long. Uh, there's two community events I wanted to talk about and just a little challenge to the council members. First of all, uh, on behalf of the UBM, they are having a tiny pageant at our church, which is St. Patrick's Church in East Chicago at 3810 Grand Boulevard. Uh, on the 29th of this month from 4 to 8 p.m., tickets are $20. Uh, if you get them ahead of time, they cost a little bit more. If you get them at the door, tickets will be sold at the door. And it is for uh, a tiny pageant for children that are the ages of 8 to 12 years of age. And this is on behalf of the UBM. And uh, for more information, you can co contact Margaret Gomez at 219 8010810 or Rosa Maria Rodriguez at 2198011896. Also, I sent this out uh, uh, a bit to uh, different school systems and, and, and so forth. And I don't know this lady, but it was passed on to me, and I'm passing on the information too, although it's kind of last minute. But the, uh, Charlotte Strawhorn, I don't know this lady, but I did call her. I did take a look at the website. She has a foundation. Um, and it, the website is www.campmac.org. This is a one week uh, free camp for children that are ages eight to 12. The only other thing is this, their parents are neither need to be in state or federal custody. This is a special camp, it is free. It is for children that are between the ages of eight to 12. <coughs> their parents need to be either in state or federal custody. Do your own homework, and all I can say, I, I called her, I talked to her, I took a look at the website, and I'm just passing the information along. www.campmac.org. Her phone number is 219-944-0620. And her email is charlotte, C-H-A-R-L-O-T-T-E, 1033 at sbcglobal.net. So like I said, uh, and it is, the camp is actually from July the 13th through the 19th, totally free. And it's not just for Lake County, it's for anybody. Um, and the, uh, like I said, it is totally free. And I did know too that last minute, uh, 
for any registrations is July the 3rd. So as you, if you know of anybody, turn those names in to her as soon as possible. One last thing, One I'm not minute, a parent. Sir. I've been a lifelong pre uh, resident of East Chicago for period, you know, since, since the beginning of life here with, for me anyway. But I, I do attend the school board meetings. Uh, I understand we just got a brand new school superintendent. <laughs> And there's nothing that says why everyone that sits up here and everyone that sits here and, and back there cannot attend and, uh, the school board meetings whenever possible. The gateway to a better East Chicago is nothing else but our school system. A gateway to a better East Chicago is nothing else except for our school system. It's improved in some ways, but it's still facing a lot of problems. So there's nothing that says why our school, uh, our council members and everyone in here and everyone that is listening that does not attend a school board go to a school board meeting now, especially since we have a new school superintendent. And in order for that school superintendent to do a great job and uh, is to have the support of the community and to have the support of the school board. Thank you. I believe we have one more. Next, we have Carla Morgan, attorney. Hello again. Um, you mentioned 4th of July, and I just wanted to uh, put a reminder out to everybody about fireworks. Um, fireworks, uh, it's only legal to use them on your own personal property. So even though we kind of have a tradition of people uh, lighting fireworks in the middle of the street on the city right away and blocking traffic sometimes, and sometimes using them in city parks, that's not allowable, and that's state law. So uh, just kind of a reminder for the public um, about those two things. You can use fireworks on your own property, that's fine. You cannot use them in city parks or in a city right away. And also someone 18 years or older needs to be present whenever kids are using fireworks. <coughs> um, violators can get a ticket. Um, it's a class C infraction. But I also want to remind people, excuse me, I have a cold, but of the city's 4th of July celebration with fireworks at the marina Thursday. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Thursday, July 3rd, uh, starting at 5 p.m. at the marina, and the fireworks show starts at dusk. So just to remind us about the holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Morgan. Have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilman Santos. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Santos? Yes. Battle? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Cuevas? Yes. Orange? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Good night. <laughs>